Hello everybody and welcome to the first lesson in a new series on the subject of propositional logic. In this video what we're going to do is take some time to just take an overview of the basic structure of propositional logic, asking the question what propositional logic even is, and then thinking about and, and formulating some of the major elements of propositional logic, looking at the different connectives that we have, the ways in which these relate to the various different connectives, before we spend some more time in the next lesson defining the connectives in a far more formal and rigorous uh, logical way. Now, propositional logic fundamentally concerns itself with atomic sentences and the relationship that is had between atomic sentences. And it is sometimes also just, just described as the logic of propositions. And with this in mind, we can come to a little bit of a definition of the kind of things that we use. So when we think here where we're talking about propositional logic, we're talking about the logic of propositions. So then this really begs the question, OK, what are propositions? Propositions, OK. And the answer to this question is essentially um, any sentence that can have a truth statement, a truth value attached to it. So when I think of what a proposition is, the conclusion is any sentence that has a truth value. What does that mean? What does it mean to say something has a truth value? OK, well, what this means is that it can either be true on the one hand or it can be false on the other hand. Let's take an example of what would be considered a, a, a propositional, uh, a proposition. So if I say, for example, and I, if I were to type it out, um, it is raining today. OK, we've got a little bit. Of, it's a bit small, but uh, we have this sentence here. It is raining today. Why is this a proposition? Well, it is a proposition because it is a statement. It is a statement. It is a sentence. OK. And it is a sentence that has a truth value. So it has truth value attached to it. It can either be true or it can be false. As it turns out in this, uh, in the particular part of the world where I am at the moment, it is actually false. It is not raining um, today, although it looks like it might do. Um, so this is what we describe as a proposition. And so really when we think what is propositional logic, well, it is the logic of those propositions. We tend not to use the propositions in their entirety. This is a proposition. But in reality, we would tend to reduce this proposition to something of a simple symbol. So rather than saying it is raining today, I could instead say, for example, uh, P. OK, you might be thinking, well, how does this work? Well, what we have here is the attached to this proposition is the sentence it is raining today. If we want it, we could have any proposition attached to this sentence. And so what we are doing here is we are therefore now taking propositional logic. We are taking the propositions, things like it is raining today or the sun is out or I've hurt my foot, all of these different sentences that can be either true or false. And we are just going one step higher. We are sort of leveling it up slightly to a point where now we are not talking about specific propositions, we're talking about propositions in their abstract. And so propositional logic, um, sometimes described as PL, OK, propositional logic is concerned with atomic sentences, atomic sentences, OK, atomic sentences, sometimes known as propositions, propositions, OK, and that these atomic sentences and we're talking about and their relations and their relations. OK. And their relations. This is what we are studying. This is propositional logic. OK. And so we take away the sentences themselves and we replace them with symbols. We have symbols like P, we sometimes use Q, we sometimes use R, S and T. Those are the sort of general propositions that you would use in propositional logic. Most textbooks and most uh, lecture notes on this topic would also do something very, very similar. We use the lowercase, so this would actually be incorrect. We would use the lowercase. Um, 
And this is what we have. So this is the first step in defining what propositional logic is. It is the relationship between these various different propositions, between the proposition P, between the proposition Q, between R, between S, between T. Uh, we can also have V if you wanted to, although that does get a little bit, um, uh, it does mess things up slightly. Um, so we have all of these different propositions. And so the next question therefore is, oopsie daisy, we have to get rid of this, okay. Uh, and so the next question, therefore, is if this is what propositional logic is, we're talking about the relationship between propositions, then what are the relationships between propositions? And this gives rise to the question of logical connectives. OK, so we're going to talk now about connective very briefly. So we're talking about connectives. What are connectives? These are the things that explain and describe the relationship between the various different propositions that you have. And so we go from just having propositions on their own, like we have up here, to a language of propositional logic. And so how does this work? Well, there are fundamentally five different connectives that we will be concerning ourselves with. We have what is known as the negation the negation, we have a conjunction, conjunction, we have the disjunction, disjunction, we have the material implication, material implication, and then we have the material equivalence, material equivalence. OK, these are the five connectives that we're talking about. And each of these connectives have their own different symbols that we can associate with them. So when we're talking about a negation, we have a thing like this. It's like a little um, it's like a little I don't know. It's almost like a sideways L to an extent. That's what the negation looks like. A conjunction is like an upside down V or like a hat. The disjunction is the opposite of this. It looks like the letter V itself. The material implication looks like an arrow facing in this direction. And then the material equivalence is an arrow facing in both directions, like so. Now, there are other different ways in which these different connectives um, can be uh, examined. So, for example, sometimes conjunctions look like this, like a U. Um, so, uh, uh, sometimes you have um, this as being the negation. It all depends on the textbooks and it all depends on the logical um, lecture notes that you are looking at. Fundamentally, um, whatever works for you, just pick a symbols, a set of symbols for the connectives that you are referring to, whether it, 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 it is conjunctive with the lecture notes that you are working from or the textbooks that you are working from or not, whichever ones is the best, and just stick to that. We're going to try and stick to these ones uh, for the most part, because these are the ones that when I was an undergraduate, I learned. And so uh, these, uh, the notes that I've devised and the and the and the lessons that I've made come from both um, lecture notes that I have met that I made very, very, uh, a very long time ago, and also um, from the textbooks and further reading that I, I have put in the description down below. And so just as a basic finisher, then let's have a look at what some of these sentences look like without getting into any detail about what any of these things mean, because that's what we're going to do in the next lesson. So you can have, for example, a proposition where you have a negation and then you have the proposition like this. And then you could maybe have the proposition in relation to another proposition. We can then put brackets around these things and we can have a proposition here and we could have a material implication that gives us a proposition over here with maybe another negation with another R, a disjunction, shall we say, and then we can have S. Then we could even have another bracket if you wanted, and you can have, uh, for, for example, um, you could have, for example, T, and then the material equivalence, and then you can have U. Okay, this is a sentence in propositional logic. Obviously, be careful with the parentheses and how you place them, but this is what the kind of things that we're going to be looking at, um, uh, how they look. Okay, um, and fundamentally, um, what this actually means is if not p and q then uh then not 
are we this is uh, something wrong. let's put a, a disjunction here we put a little connective here as well then not r or s or if, uh, t if and only if u these are different ways in which we can um, explain what these sentences mean um, the next lesson I'm going to go into more detail about what the logical connectives are and how they actually work. We're going to define them fundamentally uh, from the perspective of logic themselves. And so you'll have a better understanding of how they work and how they operate in the next lesson.